Good day, nerds, and welcome to episode 115 of the Nerd Cantina Show. I'm your host, Ken, joined by my co-host, Steve, and we are going to cover this week's nerd news. We'll begin in entertainment with a new weekly show by the creators of South Park, and we've got some video game news with the pushback of Cyberpunk, and then we'll move over into tech with the Section 230 hearing with the Google, Facebook, and Twitter CEOs. Some new ransomware threats targeting hospital systems, and then some drone and space news. There's much to get to. Let's get started. Calling back all nerds. Nerds! All right, and let's get going on episode 115 of the Nerd Cantina show here. And, uh, you know, I know it's. It's uh it's November first at the time of recording this, so uh some big things coming up, big countdowns. Uh, you ready? Ready to, to count it down, Steve? Yeah, um, I'm counting down the days till I get my Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox One, huh? The Series X, whatever it's called. <laughs> whatever the whatever the naming whatever convention series, for the whatever yeah, random. Like, I, I that's the one thing the P- <laughs> PS fanboys got on us is like they couldn't just go with. PlayStation's one through five, you know, we had to go Xbox, Xbox 360, like all these, like, just give me an Xbox, just call it an Xbox. Yeah. It's wh- whoever thought it was cute to name it Xbox 360. Cause then from there, where the hell do you go? Yeah, I know. Like whoever did that one is, is what ruined everything. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, the Xbox naming, but no, in all seriousness, we're recording this on Monday, November 1st. Uh, this comes Second. out on w- Oh, yeah, 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 Monday, November 2nd. And, uh, you know, this comes out uh, Wednesday. Who I, I don't know what, what's going to happen to the world. Um, so <laughs> so maybe, yeah. maybe and nobody listens to this. Uh, maybe the internet's shut down. Uh, maybe we're in full revolt. I don't know what's going to happen. By next week, we might be recording in some Mad Max Thunderdome HUD. <laughs> but until then, we'll recap the news. So let's... Uh, Let's just jump into some entertainment talk and the, my absolute favorite piece of entertainment coming out of last week was uh, Sassy Justice. Oh my God, that thing was just too much to watch. <laughs> it was just too much for me. Like, so for anybody who missed it, you should absolutely go find it out on YouTube or wherever. Um, the, the creators of South Park have created a show just solely off of deep fakes uh, called Sassy Justice, which is really just following some some flamboyant news reporter in what was it like Cheyenne, Wyoming, or I don't yeah. remember what random like Middle America small town that it was pretending to be. Uh, and it this one it was a you know really meta meta and the the deep fake fake news report about deep fakes. Uh, but man, like I, I don't understand how they get around getting sued now for this like i think they're in the testing the water South i think Park, every just episode has money. to say that like every celebrity likeness is not that celebrity you know what i mean they have that disclaimer in front of every south park like deep fakes is on a whole nother level of of likeness <laughs> oh they're i mean they are they are testing the legislators to come and stop this right <laughs> like in the end they didn't deep fake at any point in time, and they didn't deep fake and have, you know, well, actually, they did deep fake Trump speaking for Trump. Yes, they did. So they absolutely just mimicked him <laughs> playing himself. <laughs> so, so that, that defeats, I was going to say, at no point in time did they use the people's likeness to play themselves. Nope, that's a lie. So they just did whatever they wanted. They did, um, <laughs> yeah. But like, and I just don't understand how, like, this is allowed, but you know what I mean? But people get sued for far less. Like, how is. How is deep fakes not the the ultimate lawsuit coming out? I mean, I feel like it's it's going to happen. Um, but if if you haven't seen it, you do need to you do need to see it. We'll yeah, tell, I don't even want to get that it, much I mean, away because it's, it's like it's. But the, the deep you, you fakes watch are it, great. Your, your jaw just drops, kind of like is uh, how good it is and how just absurd it is at the same time. And they they apparently made like a deep fake studio. Uh, specifically optimized to 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 do this. These are some of the best deep fakes you will see on the internet um, in a very just stupid way. But you know, they even demonstrated with like the 
the voice actor who was pretending to be Michael Caine, demonstrating that like really a really good impersonator could absolutely like make bring these things to life uh, in a whole new level. Uh, or you could yeah, just Michael Caine bit was something else. <laughs> yeah, and same thing with uh, who's you know they had the the Sound of Music. What's her name? Uh, is that oh, Julie Andrews? <laughs> the Julia. Uh, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And that's why I, I, I could be terribly wrong. But either way, like, I mean, that that looked like, I mean, that was her uh, in that, that scene. It's it's absolutely nuts, um, the the quality. And honestly, I, you know, let Trey Parker and these guys not get sued and lose terribly on this. And like, this is going to it's be the future the of SNL or the future of the competitor SNL or whatever else where you just get really good voice impersonators and you do whatever ever the hell you want with people's faces and that's your sketch comedy right there like that's it i i I feel bad even like supporting this after the deep fake episode we did on how dangerous these deep fakes are and how like bad for society deep fakes are i feel bad enjoying this i kind of i really do (laughs) i i mean i do too I'm still gonna watch every episode. I know. Um, it's, and, right. it's so it feels so bad about watching it. I'd like to see what they're trying to like. Are they just trying to be satirical and funny? Are they trying to just demonstrate how good this can be and and force the hand of like legislators to actually like okay how how do we actually legislate our way around this? How do we actually make this to where you know this is illegal this is something that we can hold people accountable for um it's a a completely new realm and we don't have any mechanisms really to to it could be both it could be both so yeah maybe they're just trying to be funny and they're just trying to illuminate like i said i mean this entire episode was about the threat of deep fakes while they were doing it in deep fake so you know maybe they're being somewhat sincere in that in in that highlighting of of the problems the (laughs) The Tom Cruise deep fake that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the whole thing was 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 gold. So I definitely urge everybody to, to go and uh, and watch some sassy justice. Uh, and it's, brush it's up on just, them deep fakes. Go listen just to good. the Cantina conversation. It's uh, yeah. It's 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 going to become more prevalent in your life. You're going to hear that term used a lot more over the next three years. I mean, you you really are right. We talked about it. I think about two months ago in the during the shutdowns of the pandemic at the beginning of like the basketball finals that there is you know deep faked commercials that were like legitimate deep fake commercials uh and then there's some like announcing that they're deep fake commercials the ones with like baker mayfield and whatever else where they've actually put their heads on other people's bodies um but there's there's a lot that they can be that they can do like legitimately through deep fake and then there's the nefarious stuff uh like what we covered in the cantina conversation with adam dodge about uh this being a way to victimize mostly women uh, through non-consensual it's, porn. It's eventually going to hit to the point where you're going to need like, like so like certain European countries, if you Photoshopped a picture, it has to have like a certain tag on the picture to show that it was Photoshopped. Like there's going to be, you're going to, there's going to be regulations passed in the next five years that state if something has been deep faked, you have to like notify fine print that it's been deep faked. And that's, that's one of the, that's one of the things that are being talked about to combat these is, uh, watermarks is creating unique watermark type of uh, identifiers that can be put on videos. Uh, that'll be apparent if it, that video was, doctored in any way and that like reputable sources uh like news outlets and whatever else have their own unique watermarks so that way you know where it came from you know if it's if it's somewhat uh reputable that to me like that's that's sure gonna probably stop some of them but but in the end what people believe on youtube and facebook and stuff like that like you think a watermark stopping this no get the hell out of here no uh, <laughs> this, there, there's no turning back uh, it's it's going to be a pretty rapid turn from here to just complete skepticism of everything you see uh, on the internet. So I'm telling you, I saw John Cena kick that baby. I seen it. <laughs> I seen it with my eyes. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll definitely uh, we'll see where that goes. But these guys are putting out quality deep fakes and demonstrating, uh, you know, the the capability here and uh, on what what really can be done. Uh, 
you know, pretty quickly. They're, they're turning these things around pretty quickly. It's not like it's, you know, the Scorsese spent like three years making the Irishman or whatever else, what a YouTuber can do in 10 minutes online nowadays. Yeah, uh, I, it, I it's just a quick think turn. South Park's just trying to force the government's hand at this point because it's just so, so blatant. Yeah. Like, they're just like, make what I'm doing illegal, please. Like, because <laughs> if not, we're just going to, we're going to use these tools to just man savagely attack everybody that's ever been famous or done something stupid yeah. and until you make until you make what we're doing wrong then we'll just keep doing it well yeah i guess we can we can move on from uh from t-fakes here talk about actual like legitimate movies and shows and things that uh you know a amazon argument that came out this last week uh covering the fact that the the videos and things that you buy uh and you know insert air quotes into your own head or whatever else around the the word buy, uh, that you don't actually own that purchased content, uh, that it's more of a, uh, you know, it's a licensing agreement that Amazon can, you know, whether they lose the rights to it or for whatever reason it happens to be, uh, in the end, Amazon really reserves the rights to it and they can end your access as the consumer to that content that you purchased. Uh, so this is what uh, Amazon's uh, argument is. They they have been sued uh, regarding this, and this is their continued argument that it it is not a purchase necessarily or or a buyer that represents ownership. It is the purchasing of a lease agreement or licensing agreement, and uh, yeah, you don't have it. You don't own any rights. And Doctor O kind of hinted towards this when we did the interview with him when I was saying how how can Amazon charge me the same price for a movie digitally as opposed to me buying the blu-ray in a store where i actually get a physical copy that i can do whatever i want with you're going to charge me the same amount of money to send ones and zeros and he even said at that moment you know and and that's just based on the licensing term when they want to revoke that and i you know i thought when he said that that like it was like a possibility but it's like nah, no one's going to be that big of a dick like the the outrage that would come from somebody doing that would just be ginormous and, and not worth it. And to hear them just come out and be like, yep, no, that's what we're doing. Like for real, that's like legit. That's how it's going to be is just, it's man, it just pisses me off so bad. It, it, it really does piss me off. Uh, and largely just because like, you know, words mean things. Uh, and and when you're going to slap a, a, a button on there to, to rent it for a certain price or buy it for another price, like there's there's nowhere in this world that the word buy doesn't equal ownership. So I think at, at this point, like the, the FTC, you know, the, the Federal Trade Commission or somebody should come in and say, hey, your language needs to be clear around this then. The word buy equals ownership. You you can't put anywhere on your options on your screen that somebody's going to click through on Amazon Prime or other Fire Stick or whatever it happens to be. Uh, they can't click the word buy. You can't have that as an option there. And like at least maybe if you put like, hey, you can rent it for two ninety nine or you can lease it for four ninety nine, people are going to think like, hold on, what the hell does lease my movie mean? And at least that question to consumers will come. Yeah, this is it's, bullshit. It's basically an an extended indefinite rental. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's that's essentially what they're saying you got. And I mean, is is not having to get up and put in the disc really worth worth it at this point? You know, like if I have a disc, I could at least loan it to somebody else, you know, let them borrow my movie. They are starting to do a little bit more uh, with that My Movies Anywhere app to where I can I can let somebody watch certain movies in my in my app. But I only get a few of those tickets a month to give out and it's not even every movie I have. So it's it's still at a point where like you're paying the same amount of money but losing all, all kinds of like and <laughs> yeah, benefits with it, you know, and like I said, all to just what not have to get off my fat ass to watch it, like when I want to watch it. I don't, I don't know, man. I just yeah, it, and you don't have to go to the store, and you don't have to save all these discs floating around your house, and, and I mean, there are benefits to digital ownership, and you know, I think intuitively everybody kind of understands that, like, okay, if Amazon folds up, like whatever I bought from them is a wash that's gone. Uh, you know, you you buy stuff on your Xbox or whatever else, the Microsoft store. If Microsoft goes away one day, sorry about your luck. Uh, you just don't think that these companies, you know, 
while their relationship with you is enduring, uh, that they have the ability to, to kind of hold those cards. We don't know under what terms they're going to end that lease with you or end that licensing agreement or who really owns that licensing agreement, whether it's, you know, the production company or whatever else that can end that relationship with Amazon. We don't know what those, what those are. So we're not making informed decisions as consumers. And that's really where I, the, Again, I, I, this is this is the role of like the FTC. Uh, they're supposed to protect consumers uh, from these things. Yeah, I just in it. So when you get tied into these companies too, like that. So not so much with like Amazon doing this, but it's the same thing we talk about with PlayStation and Xbox when you buy the games under your gamer tag, and now that they're going to be monitoring monitoring your chat, the more you buy from these companies, the more you're kind of like tethered to them financially. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, so now they have control over your speech. They have control. They, they're modifying your behavior because you have become pot committed, you know, in in your relationship to them digitally. Like it's a messed up (laughs) scenario, man. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's definitely not. I, like I said, I, 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 pretty appalled by this whole situation here uh and the only solution is honestly like regulation um or just don't buy things digitally i mean you know i'm not buying anything digitally so yeah yeah. (laughs) like when it comes to flexing consumer power you like (laughs) you you don't have a weapon like you've never (laughs) bought into anything so like you you have no stake in the game no no company is worried about losing your your uh you're, yeah, you're I'm, I'm always exercising my consumer power by making them earn my business. They just haven't done it yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in the end, I, I, yeah, like I, I think we we covered this to to some great depth here, but it's uh it's a frustrating uh, issue here. We'll see if it goes away. We'll see if it gets legislated away, or or this lawsuit, which is still being heard right now, um, results in you know maybe some damages owed to uh, to individuals which would force Amazon to either continue to pay damages to everybody or change their policies going forward. Hopefully we get something out of it. You know, at least people are talking about it now. Like we, you know, we had covered it a while ago, but it wasn't on anybody's minds. At least somebody is taking it to court and bringing it to a head and we'll see where it goes and where we have to pivot from there. All right. And then I guess uh, before we push out a entertainment movie and stuff like that, we can just you know, it's a sad day. We we lost a uh, Sean Connery. We lost a uh, you know a James Bond. We lost Indy's dad. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know Sean Connery passes away. So uh, yeah, nerds nerds uh, mourn mourn your loss there. Yeah, it's uh makes you feel makes me feel really old. I grew up with a lot of Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's definitely uh yeah for for us eighties and nineties babies. You definitely grew up with uh. With Sean Connery movies and you know the the housewives and their infatuation with him, uh, that was definitely I must definitely have something. Seen Hunt for October at least a thousand times in, <laughs> in my early years. That movie was on like every station all the time. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, another one, uh, another another sad twenty twenty loss here. But all right, let's move on to uh, well, not happier news. All right, and then in uh, some gaming news, we've got some. Yeah, disappointing news for for some fans here that Cyberpunk 2077 was uh was delayed once again. Now this time yep. uh making its delay out to December what did I say December 8th or December 10th uh, of uh, of 2020 here. So push back from November 19th to the December 10th. Yeah, I think people are just going to just wait to see it on the shelf at this point. I don't think anybody's really holding their breath for this anymore and expecting it to be even come out. I think even the night before, everyone's just going to wait for an announcement. Yeah, I'm really curious on what you know. What what is the the pushback this time? Uh, I think I think it's already set to where the multiplayer of it is not going to be uh, released with the game uh, or with its initial kind of uh, kind of release here in December. Uh, and then you've got you know this being the the third delay and i know they're just this is probably them delaying it just enough to where they can hope to still get into to some stockings and some some christmas uh, buys uh although they're now going to miss the 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 big sale windows and everything else in uh in november and there's i don't know if there's any way to look at this 
like optimistically that this game is going to release and it's going to be done well. Like this is them crunching to barely make the Christmas season. If you buy it on December 10th, just expect it to be. Yeah, they had it. They had it down to where they were going to come out right as the next gens released. So it would be it could be that first game you buy for the new next gen consoles. And now they they like you said they're they're going to miss that Black Friday crowd. All the Christmas shopping might already be done. Black Friday crowd is a uh, is is a weird <laughs> yeah, term to use yeah, at this point in time. This, yeah, that's good. But, this here. <laughs> but yeah, no. I all I could think is that somewhere out there. Keanu's just saying like I put my name on this shit like you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> guys get put it the fuck together give you um, guys my likeness for this <laughs> what the fuck yeah it's uh I don't know sad delay for them and uh either way where I I'm not buying it but I I know many uh many will hopefully it's hopefully this is just like some minor bugs that they need to clear up and not not some game that they're going to release and they're immediately going to have to start patching and fixing cuz it's it's not ready Oh, it's going to have to be patched, and it's going to have to be fixed. It's just the the MO. It's the way think people do things nowadays. You're never going to get a nice, finely tuned game. Like, I think game developers now are, are just a, a little bit spoiled because they don't have to push out that Nintendo 64 cartridge that's just yeah. stuck perpetually like that for forever, for eternity. <laughs> you know, so, like, ever since the days of patching have started, like, they all just kind of phone it in like there was there was a day where you had to put that bitch in a cartridge and it's like that forever yeah. forever <laughs> well we can uh we can move out of video game and entertainment here and uh let's push into some tech and the first big big event that took place which was big in in like what i anticipated and expected um and then in the end, I, you ended up hearing nothing about it. Uh, and that was the Section 230 hearings where uh, the Google, Facebook, and Twitter CEOs were called the Senate. We've been talking about other issues. And we just kept leaning into the fact that, hey, on October 29th, there's going to be another hearing. Uh, there's going to be another hearing. As we've talked about antitrust, we've talked about, okay, well, they're, getting, they're also going to answer about Section 230. Um, and then in the end, the hearing happened on October 29th, and nobody talked about it. Like, it's... A week before the election, and nothing happened in this hearing. Uh, did you watch any of it or watch any recaps of it? I mean, yeah, I watched a few recaps, and it's it's just, it's such a waste of time. This one particularly, like Section 230, it it, it can be debated and potentially modernized. Um, I, I don't want it to see it go away or whatever else, and with Section 230 being uh, the... The piece of legislation back from the 90s, you know, talking about like AOL days, um, where, you know, the, it's what distinguishes these online platforms as not publishers, where, you know, uh, various information and, uh, you know, freedom of speech that can exist there on the platforms without holding the pub- them as publishers that they have to kind of have editorial rights over uh, what is published. It's important towards free speech on the internet. I, I don't know what, I don't, while there is a lot of misinformation and damaging shit that comes out of the internet, uh, at the same point, if you strip away Section 230 and you make Facebook, Google, Twitter responsible for the actual things everybody says, I think that ends everybody's ability to express their opinions at all on the internet uh, in these social platforms. So you can't get rid of it. Maybe modernizing it, maybe making things a little more clearer. Sure, the government should have a questioning of Section 230. This was just a partisan shit show. Well, I think a lot of this might happen have to do with just like I think all these politicians want big tech to know that they're coming to shake that money tree. <laughs> like, hey guys, we we could really fuck with your business. Like, you know, it's like the old mafia days, and it's like you, know, you got no, you got a nice ice cream shop here be really sad if something happened to it wouldn't it you know like you know these politicians they don't know what the hell is going on they just know like y'all got a bunch of money and power um we want some of that uh we'll start fucking up your shit if you don't give it to us so just uh donate to this campaign fund now i mean i think you know some of that is is just blatant threats this one was you know just an awkward hearing less than five days from an election, just so predominantly the the Republican side can just throw out throw out all kinds of 
just yeah, they want allegations sound of censorship and yeah they were really just fighting for for their little clips uh that they can get on there to you know that the, the hunter biden emails all, all the other things that are going on and again there's 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 questions to be had towards these industries uh, about the way they control the flow of information. This was completely unproductive uh, and it served very little purpose. It's sad because, because again, it, it, the the longer we take to to do anything about this, the worse this problem gets, and the harder it is to stop that that train that has just gone way off the tracks now. You know, hopefully after the election's over, we can maybe get some people that actually can focus in on getting some stuff done because we won't have another one for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, the, the main points I took out of this was, first, uh, somebody might not want to go do a health check on Jack Dorsey. Um, <laughs> that, that dude looks well, rough. Wellness check. And, man, like it's just funny, even like the clips, like leaning into it, from wherever you watched it, you would have the the images, the the, the professional pictures of all the CEOs, and be like, "And today we're going to hear from Jack Dorsey or whatever else." And like the image of Jack Dorsey with the the nicely, neatly trimmed goatee from like I think it was like three months ago, and now he's full like ZZ Top beard that that is off camera you can't see the bottom of this damn beard anymore <laughs> and he just looks like a mess and yeah I, I, i'm concerned I, I think uh i think the stress has gotten to him uh, and <laughs> he looked he looked bad and completely shook uh by the questioning there nothing he can do will ever satisfy anybody so <laughs> no yeah and you just when you're sitting on a pile of money like that and you can't win you know you just you just donate. You a go full Lebowski. Portion you just go it, yeah. full Lebowski. <laughs> and then the other superficial takeaway I took from it was that I think Sassy Justice had a better representation of Mark Zuckerberg than that. Like that dude is oh, just sure. a walking deep fake. Like for if you sure. look at him on camera, there is no way you could tell that that is actually him on camera right now. That guy is a flat out robot. That, you, that it looks as though. No, he, he didn't actually show up. And he's I, I just got Facebook some staffer sitting there. He's perfected him. the. He's a life model decoy. He's an LMD. <laughs> yeah. So like, he's a full LMD. He's he's actually in the Pocono somewhere in a resort, <laughs> and he just sends out all these fake zucks to just deal with shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. No. It, the, there's you. You watch the video cuts from like Jack Dorsey to him. And then it's like all of a sudden, it's like a Jack Dorsey's in some grainy, garbagey video quality. He looks like he hasn't showered in a really long time. And then it cuts to to Duck, and it's like an HD quality camera, but like he's not moving. He's talking, but there's zero expression. There's nothing. It just looks fake. Uh, it's a uh, well because he's got that Facebook chat to sell. <laughs> he needs he needs that nice clear picture because he's trying to get everybody to buy them shitty Facebook tablets to put in their house so they could make Zoom calls to each yeah. other. <laughs> Dorsey ain't got no skin in that game. He don't give a shit. He's just growing a beard, giving everybody's debit cards boosts. <laughs> All right. Well, Section Two Thirty was largely a waste of time, or the hearing was wa- was a waste of time. Uh, Maybe the next, maybe the next time they wrangle in all the CEOs and text people, we'll actually have intelligent legislators talk about real issues. Yeah, I mean, at least it's still in play. At least this isn't something we're trying to pass. This is something they're trying to dismantle. So the longer they take to dismantle it, the better. Yeah, and and because of its lack of productivity, like there's zero legislation or even recommendations of legislation came out of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, government's going government. <laughs> All right, then we can uh, we can move and get through a couple uh, last topics here. And we talked about this weeks ago, and the uh, the FBI and the uh, the Cyber Security uh, Task Force or, or whatever exists to to manage these things uh, made announcements over the weekend that there were significant uh, threats and targeted hospitals being targeted in massive waves of ransomware attacks. And uh, like th- this wasn't some like minor thing that just I mean, the FBI did tweet about it, um, but it really wasn't just like, hey, a tweet that should should be ignored. Like, this was a, actually a really large scale attack on uh, on our hospital systems. Yeah, that's a lot of sensitive information too. Like when you think about the 
the amount of personal information your your hospitals have have stored in their computer files that they share around it's i can't imagine that giving that to anybody bad is going to going to be any good for your life whatsoever it's bad enough like you you have a, a what is social security a nine digit number that if anybody get, gets it's just like the ruins your day and it's like then you take that add in like blood type fucking yeah yeah the, and- the amount of extortion i can imagine that could happen from medical files would be staggering and this one is you know while they were able to target certain health records or, or whatever else in, through the, the systems, it was more about crippling the systems itself. Uh, and some of these hospitals were reporting that they were like targeted and defending against uh, in single days, like nine different massive scale attacks. Um, you know, one, one in, uh, I'm trying to see what the, the state was, but uh, in the end, you have f- said that they identified six attacks into their system in a single day, which means that they know there were many more. Um, and this was happening across multiple states, multiple hospital systems, all taking place on the same day uh, and being able to lock them out of their systems. So it's not just a matter that they're getting access to health records. There were hospitals having to divert patients to other hospitals because they couldn't access what they needed to within their systems in order to administer medicine. Uh, so we started to see a bottleneck effect of hospitals that were affected by this not being able to perform health and and this was relatively a relatively probably you can call it unsuccessful attack uh by the the, the cyber criminals in the sense that it didn't completely shut down these systems it didn't actually effectively uh shut down or destroy any anything that they they were going after Just some a couple of the hospitals were affected but but realistically like this could have devastating effects like if they can continue to probe these things and they eventually find that exploit that they need uh, yeah, this could cause some significant uh, health implications. Yeah, and I think us coming from like a large metropolitan area, you kind of take hospitals for granted. Like there are a lot of communities where they only have one <laughs> right. one local hospital. You know what I mean? So that goes down. It it really throws a monkey wrench in your life. Yeah, it's uh. So this is something like this is a you know one of the the infrastructure attacks that that we should be worried about. Um, you know, we we don't look at necessarily hospitals as parts of infrastructure. We, those are capitalistic endeavors and private businesses that run these hospitals and everything else. But in the end, they you know they're they're, they're as important to to our society as the the infrastructure systems that we're always worried about. Whether it, you know be power plants and you know all these other issues that we talk about, and we. We dream about in all these movies or whatever else about getting shut down by hackers and cyber criminals. Uh, but the health system is something that we definitely want to protect. Uh, so the FBI definitely uh, was on top of this one, informing the public uh, about this one. And I'm sure we'll hear more about it in the weeks to come as far as how successful they were um, and, and what the actual volume of attacks took place. But don't worry, they gave a couple thousand to charity, so it's all right. <laughs> Take heads. And then we can uh, jump over to some uh, some some tech and automation and this was an article uh on a fruit picking drone i don't think we've talked about one of these yet we've talked a lot about automation we've talked a lot about different uh d- different drone companies and different things and uh this one is uh a fruit picking drone it's literally a a flat quadcopter type drone with a one meter long arm uh that can use uh, use ai driven tools to to detect when a piece of fruit is ripe enough to pick off the tree you can also prune and uh and maintain the trees and then uh and then pick the fruit so that way uh humans don't have to bother yeah some egghead seen all the fights about immigration and (laughs) said i'm gonna circumvent this and make a pretty penny (laughs) and and, you know like that that was one of the first things that that i thought of was this is a israeli company making these these drones the first thing i thought of is these fucking immigrant drones coming and taking american jobs (laughs) (laughs) they're not even coming to take the american jobs there's a bunch of migrants right now that are gonna be mad than a motherfucker (laughs) bunch of migrants you know and that's what everybody says is like they're not taking your jobs we're taking the jobs that you don't want to do and it's like now robots taking the jobs of the people (laughs) that do the jobs that nobody wants to do like that's the if you don't think a robot's going to come do what you do, you, you are fucking sadly mistaken. <laughs> You're taking everybody's jobs. Uh, 
I, I think looking at these things and and hearing the technology that that's in them, whether you know from from just the the, the drone flying capacity, and then you know they're the sensors that they have on them and everything else. I mean, it's really cool uh, system and idea. You know, they yeah, just tell raised- that to the dude that trekked three thousand miles from El Salvador to pick your fucking <laughs> strawberries, pal, and he comes and sees a bunch of fucking <laughs> swarming ass like drone hornet hives, like just flying around picking berries. <laughs> <¿Qué pasó? laughs> like, like dude's gonna be fucking pissed bro he's gonna be pissed yeah well either way this company's raised 20 million dollars to start producing they've already got orders uh and and they're you know they they, they claim that they have the potential of uh of like three billion dollars in annual sales once they get to full production uh but they've got plenty of orders they now have the money to to start building these things and they believe they're going to start you know actually shipping these out uh here here very soon uh so these may be coming to a european and united states you know orchard nearby 50 bucks in two years you're going to see a bunch of tan people throwing rocks at drones on cnn <laughs> 50 50 <laughs> bucks i promise you i'm nerd Sardamus in this right now the uprising will start start in the migrant fields <laughs> i i think the uprising will be actual truckers running off automated trucks off the road i don't know man I, these little drones are way further along than automated driving right now <laughs> all right and then uh I guess our, our last topic here uh, regarding some space news, and uh, and that was that the the NASA there was a NASA telescope that now claims that they've uncovered definitive evidence uh, that there is water on the surface of the moon. Yeah, like I'm wondering, like what kind of tests they needed to do to prove it. Now we've brought back moon. <laughs> like we got pe- we got moon uh, on Earth. Like we 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 have some of it here. You, you couldn't find water in it. Like <laughs> how how did you find water now? Like that's so, that's kind of what piques my curiosity about this story most. So the the the, the actual tests were UV and IR uh, sensors that they were able to do. Uh, there's a there's a cool telescope that they that they put on a 747 plane uh, that they fly it above the vast majority of the atmosphere of the Earth. Uh, so they're able to capture certain images of the moon without the water molecules and the humidity and the, and all the kind of the, the noise from earth, they're able to fly this telescope, capture these images from a flying 747, uh, bypassing the vast majority of the atmospherics that interfere with our ability to to detect it. So then those sensors were able to take new images of the moon, uh, cleaner images down to like the, the molecular scans that they were able to do through, uh, detections of uv light as well as various like ir sensing and uh, and they were able to to clearly state that the readings that they got while surprising uh it was more water than they thought uh than they thought they would ever find while surprising they did say it was definitive that there there is no other signature other than water that it could be yeah i don't know i'm just shocked <laughs> that they never found any in the scoops that neil brought back what scoops it was you a know studio. they took they it was took a studio scoops. They took. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it on Facebook. <laughs> Buzz will punch you in the mouth as you say that. Yeah, no, I mean, not everywhere on the moon uh, is determined to, to have it. They they're really looking at areas on the poles, which are furthest from from the the, the direct heat of the sun. Um, that's the primary area that they're they're looking to scan is over on the poles of the moon. That's not where you know. In the end, it's not like they went running all over the surface of the moon. They were limited, confined to a to a narrow part. Uh, so, so I, I, I don't know. I just it doesn't surprise me that other places would have water. Other places would have the things that we have. Like it's like it's space. You'd think we would have a lot in common with other things. The things that I want to know is like, what does the moon have that we don't have? <laughs> like that's the, I'm more interested in the. The things that we don't have on our planet that other asteroids and planets are carrying. Because uh, you, you figure, you know, like, all right, you got some carbon. You got, you got like, there's going to be some key elements found everywhere. We're all rocks in space. Yeah. And, you know, or, you know, you got to, you got to look into, uh, you know, the, the money that could come from some of these things in space, uh, like space mining. There was a, uh, an asteroid. That was detected uh, just this last week. 
it was worth, they estimated the value of this asteroid being, it was like 10,000 gazillion dollars. <laughs> it, it exceeded all of the value of everything. Now. Like, no, now, no, no. You're, now you're just making stuff up. Somebody's making stuff up. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm repeating these things. Um, no, it was determined that this, uh, there's an asteroid that, there's being determined vast majority of the asteroids found are just really balls of ice and and rock, but nothing uh, all that substantial. Very few of them have uh, like significant metals in it. Uh, and they found an asteroid that was pretty much all metal um, based off of what they were able to scan and test on it. Uh, it was worth I'm trying to remember what type of metal it is. Now I'm trying to fi- look up the article because I didn't actually put it on here, um, but they, but it, it was some level of like nickel uh, that like exceeds the total quantity of metals on on, on Earth. Uh, that if it could be mined and brought back here to Earth, it would have a value of you know ten thousand gazillion dollars based off of today's value. Um, and I've heard different studies that talked about that there are precious metals uh, and, and precious you know, gems and items that exist on certain asteroids. That if we were able to go like mine them and bring them back to Earth, it would completely throw off our value of 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 everything because <laughs> yeah. all of a sudden these precious metals would not be that precious anymore. They would actually yeah. be pretty prevalent. Um, and it would dress- one asteroid to tank the <laughs> platinum market. And, and that's, that's exactly what, uh, what some of these things have, uh, have, have stated. So it's a, it's an interesting concept in the end. We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's definitely in the future, like somewhere in the future, for the vibranium to hit. <laughs> it might be, it might be, uh, I don't know. 200 years from now or whatever else before we start really like mining space resources and asteroids. But those days are coming like somewhere in the future. Those days are coming. Someone's children or grandchildren are going to be, are going to be doing that shiz. Yeah. See, it's, it's 10 quintillion. I think I said like kazillion. I don't don't know what these things are. I don't know why you saying made up words to me. Like I have (laughs) some kind of context to put that in. Give me it in how many Bezos. (laughs) How many, how, how many Bezoses is that? I, Are we talking 50 I, Bezoses? I think it comes out to 10 billion <laughs> billions. This is what it, what it is. Um, You're just speaking in tongues to me now. I don't know what that is. I don't have any context for that. <laughs> Either way. Uh, I don't know. Space, uh, space is an interesting place. We'll see what, we, what uh, will be found out there in the end. Nothing significant is getting brought back to Earth while I'm alive. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. I don't think. No, we might get hit with something by chance, but I don't think we're going to reach out and grab it. No, yeah. And now I'm just going off the cuff with other space news that I that I've read this week that I didn't even share with you. Uh, <laughs> when we go with like uh, Elon Musk talked about like the Mars colonies and the the 50 million people that he wants to put on Mars by 2050 yeah. is he, yeah. he, he made a statement this week that they, that they absolutely will not fall under United States or, or the earth laws. <laughs> that, that they will be. And, and it's like, he's, he's not is wrong. He going, is he going full Waco on us with Mars? <laughs> I think he is. I think like, he's just setting up for, you know, it's renaming. Gonna, fucking Elon's going to be Mars Jesus. And yeah. he's going to go out <laughs> He's gonna have like eight <laughs> wives, eight Martian wives, like whatever, yeah. Elon. Yeah, go for it. But yeah, no, I, yeah, I, yeah. That's that's you know, not real space news there, but still, just <laughs> I find it entertaining that that he uh, he's he's already thought this through on what the legislation is gonna look like on Mars, and it's they're not gonna give any fucks about what's going on here. Yeah, he doesn't understand a little bit about human nature. And if he doesn't, he, they can land on Mars with the greatest of intentions. Six months in, that shit's Lord of the Flies. I promise you that. <laughs> well, all right. Well, that's uh, that's week in news. And well, as always, thanks. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully, four or five people listen to this on on Wednesday, and they're not shut in or you know. Whatever side you're on, you have the potential yeah. to be deeply disappointed and angry come Wednesday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some of y'all going to be mad. Some of y'all going to be happy. I'm hoping we could just all get through it together. Yeah. So hopefully uh, hopefully you're you're finding yourself uh, on post-election in good yeah. spirits. So as you're you listening to this, you whoever the your show, president is or isn't, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> keep tuning in for the nerd news. Yep. And uh, 
Join us over over at thenerdcantina.com forward slash community and uh, give us a rating, review, share, subscribe, do whatever you can. Uh, that It all helps us out. We appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next week. Talk to you later, nerds. See ya.